In the previous videos, we developed a function in hardware to do multiplication, but that hardware was slow. It required n additions to be able to do one multiplication. But in this video, we were going to see that there is a better way to do it. We are going to develop an algorithm called the Booth's algorithm, which does the multiplication much faster than the normal, the simpler algorithm that we have already seen. Uh, remember, this is our design from the previous um, video. I went ahead and uh, wrote this algorithm as well. Feel free to look at it. Um, what's important in this algorithm to realize is that we are doing an addition n times. The way we implemented this uh, if statement was also with the multiplexer, so we were still doing additions here, right? How can we make this faster? One obvious idea is to avoid doing the addition when this uh, least significant bit of the multiplier has the value zero instead of the one. So let's just look at the example before to make it more concrete. So we had four additions going on here. You know, this one of these additions is just uh, adding with zeros because we have a zero here. Obviously, we can uh, skip that and do three additions, and that will make our multiplication a little bit faster. But that's not enough. You know, if you are multiplying, let's say, number six by, uh, by number seven, this is going to uh, not give you much improvement. In fact, let's look at that. So we are multiplying six by seven here, right? And I have six and seven written, and, um, and you're gonna have three additions. Now, if this was a larger number and you, had, you were multiplying uh, by you know, a, a number that had a lot of ones in it, again, uh, it's going to be a slow. Can we do any better? I wanna just point out a very simple mathematical trick here that once you see it, it's obvious, but um, before you see it, it's actually not so obvious and it's a very interesting trick. Note this, six multiplied by seven is the same as six multiplied by eight minus one. Okay, so now what we can do is write this number, uh, these numbers in binary and see why this matters. So six multiplied by seven is equivalent by to multiply by six by eight minus one. Why do I like eight minus one? Because eight is just a one and a bunch of zeros, and one is also a, a one and a bunch of zeros. Let's do this multiplication. So mul multiplying by eight is just shifting this number to the left. So what you get is a three uh, zeros added in front. And multiplying by one is making no the difference. I'm just going to add zeros so that we have a uh, both of the numbers are the same number of bits. Um, in fact, we could go ahead and one add one more zero to both of them so that we have two eight bit numbers. Look, if I want to do this product here, six multiplied by seven, all I need to do is compute this one subtraction. Once I figured out figure out what shifts to do. I can, I can do one subtraction between two numbers right here, and I get my answer. If you do this subtraction, uh, let, let's just do the subtraction. And you can um, confirm that this is the correct value for the uh, two, it's 32. Um, plus eight, which is 40, plus two is 42. Okay, so in this example, we are able to do the multiplication with only one subtraction. We don't need uh, three additions. Okay, so now we want to see if we can generalize that idea to an arbitrary number. The generalization is uh, going, I, I'm going to demonstrate it using an example. I just wrote some number here. The first thing I want to do is look at this number and we take runs of one. We have three runs of ones here. A run of ones is just a bunch of ones in a row, uh, like you see here. So in this number, we have three runs of ones. In any number, you're going to have some ones um, uh, um, you know, padded with a bunch of zeros. Why do we look for these? 
Well, once I detect runs of ones, I can take my number and I can rewrite it as a sum of three numbers, right? So my number before is just the sum of the three numbers shown here. So that run of ones is here, that run of ones is over there, and the third one is over here. If you sum up these three numbers, you get that original number back. What's next? Well, each of these numbers has only one run of ones in them. And when you have in the number only one run of uh, ones, you can rewrite it just like we rewrote the number seven before. Remember we had this number seven and we said that seven equals eight minus one. So we turned a number with one run of ones into two numbers, each of them with only one uh, one in there. Okay, so let's see an example. I'm going to take this one on top. And I'm going to rewrite that whole number as, uh, you know, as the subtraction. If you just look at the yellow part here that I'm highlighting, you'll see why that subtraction uh, is correct, right? So if I, if I just take this number and subtract from it one, I get this number and the other zeros um, that are padded on the two sides are going to make no difference whatsoever. So this number uh, is now turned into two numbers. Each of them has only one one in there. And of course, I can apply the same trick to the next two uh, numbers that I have there. I have done that here. right? So each of the three numbers is... Uh, is translated to two numbers with um, only one one in them. And then finally, the last one is, uh, is this one over here. Okay, so what, why do we do, do this? This revision of our original number is, gonna, is going to make multiplication very easy. Why? Because multiplying by each of these rows is extremely easy. It's just shifting the number to the left by uh, the number of by these many digits. You have to shift your whatever you're multiplying by this multiplier. You just take your multiplicand and you shift it these many times, and then you do these additions and subtractions. Another way to write that is if I'm multiplying my number by a multiplicand. It's equivalent by it's equivalent to multiplying the multiplicand by each number in each row and just summing them with the correct sign. And each of these you can just rewrite them as a shift of m and a sum or subtraction. So multiplying my multiplicand with this multiplier is accomplished very simply by doing one, two, three, four, five, six shifts, and one, two, three, four, five uh, sums and subtractions. This makes the whole thing a lot easier, right? This, this, this is going to be a much faster multiplication than our original algorithm that was looking at each bit of the multiplier at a, at a time. Okay, so if I'm just given this multiplier and I'm asked, to, to apply this sort of trick that we just saw. How could I do it? Well, I have to look for runs of ones. And runs of ones, you can detect them when you go from one to zero or you go from zero to one, right? One to zero, zero to one. So I have to look at sort of pairs of digits and look for places where you have either zero and one or one and zero, like that. Okay, so let's look at that. Let's, for example, I start with the ones where you have a zero followed by a one. If you look at each of those and look at um, or the composition of the number uh, into these you know, sums, you will see that each one of the places where you have a zero one corresponds to a row that has a plus in there. Okay, so because these columns are all corresponding to um, rows with a plus, I'm going to just write a plus right above any place where we have a zero followed by a one, right, uh, like here. 
And then I can do the same thing for when I have uh, a one followed by a zero. So I keep those pluses and I look for places when we have a one followed by zero. That corresponds to a row that has a minus in it. Another one to zero, that corresponds to a row that has a minus in it. What I learned is that I can look for places where we have zero one or one zero associated with associated with zero ones a um, plus and associate with one zero a subtraction. So this now allows us to not look at this complicated math here anymore. We can simply look at the multiplier and decide the operations based on that. You look at two letters at a time. If both are zero or both are one, you don't have to do anything, like the first three ones. When you get to a place when you have a one followed by a zero, that corresponds to a row that will require for you to do a subtraction. Uh, that would be this row over there. So when I see a one and a zero, I look at how many digits I have come uh, come in. In this case, I have come in four digits, right? This is four digits in. So I'm going to take my um, M, shift it four digits in, and, um, and, and add that to my uh, product, right? So the product becomes... Uh, product and you initialize it with zero. In this case, you pro you add product by product plus m shifted four. Sorry, my mi uh, minus because we have product minus m shifted four, and I use the minus because um, um, we we have a one followed by a zero over here. Now I keep going. I uh, I have a one and a one. You don't have to do anything. You don't do anything. You don't do anything until you get to a zero one. What do I have to do for a zero one? The opposite of one zero. When I get to a zero one, it corresponds to a row that included a plus. So I have to take my uh, current product and add to it instead of subtract. Add to it m. Shifted to the left by however many bits I have come in. Here I have come in for eight total bits. So I shift eight and I add it. And I keep doing that until I get to the end of my number. And at the end, I'm going to have computed this sum. So everything that I described, you can now um, sort of formalize it into an algorithm which is called the Booth's algorithm. Booth is just the, num uh, the name of the person who came up with this algorithm. Uh, the, uh, the Booth's algorithm is what most of, the, you know, all your CPUs are gonna be using to do the multiplication. Okay, so again, our input, uh, let's assume we have just two n input numbers here and the output is also an n bit, two n bit number. So what we do is we start by setting um, the product to zero. Let's add our example number to this slide. Remember, I was uh, looking at two letters in the row. So you know this is going to be a zero, the first letter of the multiplier, and this is going to be a n minus one. But I'm going to imagine that my number also has one more letter in it and that letter is going to be zero over here it's always going to be zero i call this imaginary letter that i just added a digit that i added just a minus one why did i do that because if i don't i will always look at this uh, but what if this was a one and um and, and this was one also one. I would miss the beginning of this run of, uh, run of ones, right? So instead I put a zero here so that if 
if my number actually ends with a run of ones, I'll see, right? So we just created this dummy digit A minus one. Then for each of the letters in my, uh, uh, in my number, I'm going to look at two letters at a time. So if I is, uh, if I is five, I'm going to look at I five and I four. If it's one, one, I do nothing. If it's a zero, zero, I do nothing. If it's a zero followed by a one, we can go back to this picture. What was a zero plus one associated with? It was associated with a plus. I add. If it's a one followed by a plus, I subtract. Right, so if it's a zero followed by one, I add the uh, uh, the product with the multiplicand. And if it is a um, if it's a one followed by a zero, I subtract it. And each time I just shift the multiplicand one bit. I shift the multiplicand one bit to the left, right? Because you saw that we have to shift them as many bits as we have uh, gone this way, right? And so that's the shifting of the multiplicand. So this is right here, the Booth algorithm. In the class, we are going to walk through an example of the Booth algorithm. Um, 